Hello and welcome. I'm Sani Chi with stories from around Taiwan, in case you missed it. Green iguanas are a big problem in Taiwan. Once popular as pets, many of these lizards were abandoned in the wild, where their numbers boomed. A look at how these animals went from cherished pets to an invasive species. This is Pan Yuling and her pet green iguana, Marno. Green iguanas originally come from Central and South America. But Marno has been living with Pan in Taipei for the past eight years. It's clear that Pan and Marno are a good pairing. And the pet lizard lives in a loving and nurturing environment. But this hasn't been the case for thousands of other iguanas that were imported over the decades. In the early 2000s, around 100,000 of them were imported to Taiwan as pets. But years later, owners started to abandon them, and today they have become an invasive species in southern Taiwan. And after so many were abandoned, the wild green iguana population here exploded. It's estimated that there are now over 100,000 in the wilderness. Wild iguanas are usually found in southern Taiwan, where the weather is more suitable for them, usually near farmlands, ponds and riversides. And this has caused a lot of problems. As well as tearing up local farmlands while looking for food, the high number of iguanas roaming on roads has led to more traffic accidents. Experts are also worried about the parasites the green iguanas carry and what effect they could have on lizards that are native to Taiwan. We've not just imported iguana themselves, we also imported their parasites and their pathogens. And now we are worried about whether this parasite or pathogen will spread out because that will probably reduce the uh, fitness of our local lizards or local uh, reptiles uh, species. To tackle this problem, the government has been working for the last seven years to remove green iguanas from the wild. In 2017, around 2,000 of them were removed, a number that grew to over 40,000 in 2022. After catching them, officials usually hand the lizards over to animal experts to put them down. This follows strict procedures to ensure minimal suffering. Animal experts say this is the best way to handle invasive species like iguanas, as sending them back to their homeland requires too many procedures and regulations. But culling the animals has upset a lot of people who see it as an act of cruelty. It is much easier for us to conserve the endangered species because we keep them alive. But again, for, in, for deal with the invasive species, we, we need to put these invasive animals or invasive uh, plants into depths. So not many people want to do that. The green iguana population boom is an increasingly serious problem for Taiwan, and there's no option that everyone will agree on. While many are calling for measures to stop the iguanas from damaging farmlands and the local ecology, others feel it's cruel to cull the animals, especially since it's not the iguanas' fault they were abandoned in the wild in the first place. Ethan Chen and Sani Chi for Taiwan Plus. It's not just iguanas. The spread of invasive birds has also got ecologists concerned. Stash Butler reports. This is a light-vented bulbul, and along with the warbling white eye and Eurasian tree sparrow, they're the most common birds in Taiwan cities. But they're facing more and more competition from invasive species like this, the common miner. Stats show that from 2011 to 2021, the three fastest growing bird populations were all invasive species. Numbers of white rumped shama grew over 9,000%, followed by chestnut tailed starlings by over 5,000%, and Asian glossy starlings by 4,400%. Birds compete for food and nesting space. Researchers don't know exactly how invasive birds, like certain miners, are affecting native species. Ecologists 
In 2019, authorities began destroying nests of the African sacred ibis, another invasive species. They cut numbers from nearly 20,000 down to a few hundred. But that's tougher to do in Taiwan cities. Taiwan's government has banned people from bringing starlings into the country, but so far it's powerless to stop existing populations in the city from breeding. Researchers just have to hope the boom in non-native birds doesn't come at the cost of local wildlife. Klein Wang, Mustache Butler, for Taiwan Plus. Among the invasive bird species, African ibises are threatening local wildlife. They were introduced to Taiwan when six birds escaped from a safari park. That was the end of this African sacred ibis. There's a nationwide effort to cull the invasive species that started in 2019. These birds are native to Africa. They were first introduced to Taiwan in 1979 by the Liufu village theme park. But six of them escaped and began to breed freely in the wild. The birds are extremely adaptive and have no natural predators in the country. Their growing numbers are driving out local wildlife and threatening native birds. To save the indigenous ecology, the country set up a team of hunters to eradicate the species. They had some initial success, but tracking down the birds has become challenging as the remaining ones seem to be getting more vigilant. According to agriculture officials, 18,000 of these birds have been removed from the wild since 2019. But to completely rid Taiwan of the invasive species, more needs to be done. There are still hundreds of African sacred ibises left in the wild in Taiwan. The government is asking people to report sightings of the birds to the government through social media. They're hoping the public's cooperation will help eradicate the invasive species once and for all. Alex Chen and Tsani Chi for Taiwan Plus. Over in the Jingmen Islands, the local ecology faces a different threat, peafowl. I traveled there to understand the situation. In the part of Taiwan that sits closest to China, a stunning sight. These are the peafowl of Jingmen County. Originating in India, the elegant-looking birds were not seen on the islands until 1995. That year, the government imported them to give Jingmen a bit more beauty and color. Little did they know they would one day be considered an invasive species. Jingmen is about 152 km2. If we use in 1999, 14 of these peafowls escaped from a livestock research institute in Jingmen because of a typhoon that destroyed their cage. Since then, they began breeding freely across the islands, causing a lot of problems for local people and local animals. The boom in the birds' numbers has endangered Jingmen's local ecology. Peafowl are omnivores, so besides eating potatoes and other crops, they also feed on small birds, frogs, snakes and lizards. And they're so fast and alert, even stray dogs and Burmese pythons can't catch them. The peafowl cause even more problems during their breeding season, which lasts from April to August each year. They make a lot of noise, which affects quality of life on the island, especially at night. To resolve some of the issues caused by the birds, officials have been trying to control their population. The government has begun culling peafowl with the help of locals and a licensed hunter. Over 200 are expected to be removed from the wild this year. Despite the problems the birds have caused for locals, they say the peafowl have also brought some benefits. Some locals have also begun creating new dishes made with peafowl meat. 
，因为这个食材比较稀有啊，然后再来是这个食材只有在金门才有啊，然后所以我们就想要试着研发看看，然后增加话题性啊。Conservationists are now looking to balance the harm these invasive birds cause with the advantages they bring. Local hunter Lee says he's working with other animal protection organizations to establish an enclosed area just for peafowl. Though still in the planning stages, he hopes it can be one solution to Jingmen's peafowl dilemma. Alex Chen and Sani Chi for Taiwan Plus. Invasive plants are also a growing threat. As John Vantrius reports, Experts are trying to root out non-native plants that can damage local ecology. Taiwan is fighting back against the spread of invasive plants. One of the biggest perpetrators is the salt marsh cordgrass, a coastal plant native to North America that's swallowing up beaches. That the salt marsh cordgrass will be the whole coastline of the coast. It will damage the coastline of the coast. It will damage the coastline of the coast. It will damage the coastline. The plant, which grows quickly, dries out salt marshes along the coast and turns beaches into solid land. There are many other unwelcome species that have been targeted for elimination. Last year, the government ordered a bed and breakfast owner to destroy a field of pink mully grass, another native of the Americas, that they planted to attract tourists. And also wreaking havoc, the vine Mechania micrantha. A common English name for the plant, mile a minute weed, shows just how fast it spreads. No one's sure when it was introduced, but with its ability to kill trees, the plant, also known as the bitter vine, has damaged Taiwan's forests. Experts at Taiwan's Council of Agriculture say not all invasive species are equally dangerous. And priority should be given to plants that spread easily, cause ecological or economic damage, and are hard to eradicate. They are also calling on Taiwan's customs agents to step up efforts to keep these species out, hoping that a collective effort and awareness will stem a growing problem for Taiwan's environment. Alex Chen and John Van Trieste for Taiwan Plus. Taiwan's waterways aren't immune from the threat of invasive species either. Now anglers here are taking these invaders on and trying to give local species a shot at survival. John Van Trieste knits the story too. Armed with rods and nets, these volunteers are trying to undo years of ecological damage. They belong to an association that does regular surveys of the fish in Taiwan's waterways. What they've been finding in the country's lakes and ponds has alarmed them. The fish they're here to protect are disappearing. The worst damage of all, though, comes from invasive species. This lake just outside Taipei is a textbook example of how that happens. This place, the early research report, 都是以清江鱼为主，台湾清江鱼为主。但是经由我们这三年来不间断、断续的来这里做调查的结果，那目前发现里面的清江鱼已经消失了。目前主要的发现，大部分都是后来被放进来的外来鱼种。It's the same story in many ponds nationwide. That's why these days the group is using its fishing tools for a new purpose. Instead of documenting fish and putting them back, it's out to catch as many invasive fish as it can. 适应力好，抗受性好，繁殖力高，这是外来鱼种会快速称霸台湾水域的一个原因。我们能做的部分就是尽我们所能的去清除它，清一只少一只。Taiwan's covered in small lakes and ponds, and only has these volunteers to clean them all out. But the size of the task isn't putting off anyone here. They're all determined to make each of Taiwan's ponds a place where native species have the space they need to thrive. Eason Chen and John Van Trieste for Taiwan Plus. Thank you for watching in case you missed it. Finally, we leave you images of Taiwan's collared scops owls. I'm Sunny Chi. Take care and see you next week. <laughs>